I'm Alistair Davidson, a Master Trainer for DaVinci Resolve, and in this video we're going to talk about using the Trim Edit Mode on the Edit page of DaVinci Resolve. The Trim Mode is one of the edit modes that we can access within the Edit page of DaVinci Resolve, and we can access it either through the toolbar by clicking on this button here, or by pressing T on our keyboard for Trim. Now, what we might be used to in the edit page is if I come to the end of one of my clips or the beginning of one of my clips, if I come to the edit point, say on this clip here, I'm going to click over the edge here on this edit point and start to trim my clip. What you'll notice is that opens a gap. So if I stop trimming, I now have this big gap in my timeline. I can select that gap, I could delete it or I could drag other clips down to fill that gap. But what we can do if we want to trim that clip and close the gap at the same time is we can use our trim tool or our trim mode. So if I click on this again or press T on my keyboard and now I do the same operation if I come to the end of one of my clips here and I start to trim it you'll see that it not only trims the clip but it ripples the rest of the timeline down. And that's what it's called. It's referred to as rippling the timeline. Now, the trim edit mode has multiple different functions. It has ripple, roll, slip, and slide. And ripple edit is which I've just shown there, where I can either select the top or tail of a clip and drag it there to ripple the rest of my timeline as I trim that clip. If I trim this clip a little bit, and I now actually select the edit point itself, so this part here, rather than selecting either the top or the tail of a clip, if I click in the middle and select the actual edit point, you'll see that I can now roll my edit. So what I'm doing there is I'm either extending the clip in front while shortening the clip behind, or shortening the clip in front whilst extending the clip behind. And what you'll notice is that when I'm either doing a ripple edit or a roll edit, my viewer up here gives me a two-up display. And that two up display is showing me the out point of the clip that I'm trimming and the end point of the clip behind it. So that's really handy. And those are our ripple and roll functions. If we have a look at our slip function now, I can get to that without having to change tool just by clicking on the center of a clip. So what we've done so far is we've either clicked on the edge of a clip here or on the edit point itself to do our ripple or our roll but if I click in the center of the clip you'll see how the icon changes and now if I click and drag the extent or, or the the length of the clip in the timeline stays the same but as I move left to right I'm actually changing the extent of the source clip that I'm using in the timeline and what we can see in our viewer up here is as I'm doing this, I now get a four up display. And going clockwise, starting from the bottom left, I'm looking at the, I'll start in the bottom left here. I'm looking at the out point of the clip in front, the in point of the clip that I'm doing the slip edit on, the out point of the clip that I'm doing the slip edit on, and the in point of the clip behind it. So I can always see where I am and what the adjustments I'm making are doing to my timeline. The final edit that we can do in the trim mode is called a slide edit. And a slide edit we can perform by clicking on the bottom, this small sort of name tag here at the bottom of each clip. Again, you'll see that as I'm doing this, you'll see how the cursor changes depending on where I'm hovering over the clip. So my slide edit I can access by clicking down here and I can just move my clip up and down the timeline, extending the clip in front of it while shortening the clip behind it, or shortening the clip in front whilst extending the clip behind it. Now, what you'll notice is that I'm, as I'm doing most of these edits, I'm getting sort of a white bounding box that appears over the other clips. And that is my handles. And what my handles are, are they are the frames of the source clip that we've not yet used. So if I want to say, you know, do a ripple edit and I click and drag, I can see how far I'm able to extend that clip there by using all of the additional frames that weren't in the timeline but are in the source clip. The same way that if I do a slip edit, 
I can see how much of the clip I've got to play with as handles. Thank you.